Okay, guys, the snow is coming down. I am in an uninsulated garage, and I just completed a perfect resin print using tough resin in freezing cold conditions. Let me tell you how I did that. Hey guys, CJ from Elevated Systems. As a tinkerer and maker, the detail and complexity of my projects have truly elevated over the years, thanks to the rise of advanced yet user-friendly and affordable tools like 3D printers. But there's a catch. The photo curing resins in these printers emit toxic fumes, and with a family and pets, including extra sensitive birds, using one inside my house is a no-go. So, I've set up shop in my unheated, negatively pressured garage, but here in Colorado, the printer's ideal operating range of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius means they're off limits from November to May. Enter the Uniformation GK2, a resin printer boasting a built-in heater. Talk about perfect timing for a test run. Today, we're gonna see how it fares against the chill, share my hands-on experience, and explore its features and quirks, but first, Let's zoom into the specs and features and find out what kind of value this machine really offers. The Uniformation GK2 measures in at 350 by 315 by 455 millimeters. This is a 10.3 inch 8K printer with a generous print area of 280 by 128 by 245 millimeters. The screen is a crisp 7680 by 4320 monochrome display, dishing out an XY print resolution of 29.6 microns. User friendliness is front and center with a super responsive five inch touch screen flanked by the power button and USB port. The printer sports a flip up lid, a quick release lever for the build plate, and a quick release resin vat that slides into place, no screws needed. Plus, there's a modular carbon filter and an extra USB port out back for a Wi-Fi module should you opt for one. And of course, the key feature is the built-in PTC ceramic chamber heater with three temperature settings of 25, 30, and 35 degrees Celsius. The GK2 comes packed with all the tools and accessories to kickstart your 3D printing adventures, and then some. Now, aside from the heater, one of the low-key best features of the GK2 that I know a lot of my viewers will appreciate is that it's very modular, user serviceable, and upgradable. Not only are there replacement parts like the VAT, build plate, screen protector, FEP sheets, and filter modules actually available on the Uniformation website, but you can get a replacement screen if needed, which is easily replaceable with just a few screws and a ribbon cable or you can upgrade to a 12K screen just as easily. Let's quickly look at the unboxing and setup process with the Uniformation GK2 3D printer. The printer arrives snug and secure, ensuring that all the components are well protected during transit. Kicking off the setup, I power on the printer and raise the Z-axis to liberate the resin vat and strip away the protective films from the screen and the vat. Now, this machine boasts a factory pre-leveled platform. After a quick check, mine was indeed on the level, which is a relief because this isn't your run-of-the-mill leveling gig. The Uniformation build plate shakes things up with a unique leveling process that employs four lock screws coupled with four leveling screws. Here's the drill. You loosen the locking screws at each corner, then raise or lower each corner with the leveling screws before locking everything down tight. Here's a little heads up though. The use of the paper leveling strips seems to play a game of choose your own adventure between the printed instructions and what's in Uniformation's video. I went with this printed method and it all worked out to verify and re-level later, but I'll circle back to that in the troubleshooting segment. The final piece of the setup was snapping in the magnetically secured filter cartridge. With that, I was all set to haul this printer out to the garage and get printing. But before I can print my first project, I need to set up the slicer software. Uniformation recommends Chitubox Pro for this and even provides a free trial of the software. This works out for me as Chitubox is my slicer of choice for resin printing and setup was as simple as adding a new printer, selecting the GK2, and I was ready to go. 
Uniformation, just like every other printer brand, claims their printers are fine-tuned to work perfectly with their proprietary resins. They're hesitant to promise the same outcomes with third-party resins, which, okay, fair point, but let's be real. If a printer can't deliver quality with your chosen resin for a project, then it's not a great printer. So before I dive into the Uniformation resin, I had a mission to create the internal components for my portable gaming cyber deck. For this high stakes build, I needed the super strong, dimensionally accurate Conjure Tough resin from Chitu Systems. Although the Chitubox GK2 profile comes with settings ready for all Uniformation resins, I whipped up a new profile using the default Conjure Tough profile from the Chitu website and prepped an exposure validation test model. This resin is thick, seriously thick, requiring a warm 20 to 30 degrees Celsius to print properly, yet for the strongest, least brittle results, cranking up the heat is the way to go. So I filled the 700 watt to the fill reservoir, dialed in the chamber heater to its max of 35 degrees Celsius, popped in the USB thumb drive, picked my model, double checked the resin level, and let the system transfer the file from the USB to the internal storage. After a green light on the file validation, it was time to kickstart the heater and gradually warm things up. Once the chamber hit the sweet spot of 35 degrees, the printing commenced. The first calibration print was perfect, so I moved on to slice my parts and got them printing. Despite the mercury dipping from nearly freezing to a max of about 10 or 11 degrees, every print emerged perfect. Another handy feature I've come to appreciate in LCD printers is the vat cleaning function. When it was time to swap resins, a quick run of the cleaning cycle explodes the resin's bottom layer, Draining the leftover resin and wiping away the excess was a breeze. A quick peel left me with a spotless vat, ready for a fresh batch of Uniformation's PLA-based X13 formula. Starting off with the default X13 profile in Chitu Box, I anticipated the X13's leaner viscosity would call for a milder chamber temperature, so I set it at 30 degrees Celsius. As I expected, with the extra heat, the default exposure time of three seconds was too generous, overexposing the calibration model. A few prints later, and I dialed it down to 1.5 seconds for just the right exposure. Now, with more intricate supports on the horizon and using resin I'm unfamiliar with, I didn't want to take any chances, and I printed out the cones of calibration to double check my settings. That's when I hit a snag. The prints weren't sticking to the build plate. Turns out, after several days of nonstop printing, the build plate had drifted off level. I assumed to the material's natural expansion and contraction and constant up and down. A quick leveling adjustment, and we were back on track with no leveling issue since. The cones were slightly underexposed at 1.5 seconds, nudging me to fine tune the exposure to 1.65 seconds. Once set, I filled the build plate with the models and kicked off the printing. Despite some lengthy print times and garage temperatures dipping below freezing, the GK2's heater kept up without a hitch and the prints again turned out great. Although I really didn't like the Uniformation PLA-based resin, it separates much too quickly, resulting in inconsistent color banding and texturing in the model. Stirring in the vat didn't really work, so between every print I had to run the vat cleaning exposure, drain, and filter the resin so I could shake it up really well. In total, I put the Uniformation GK2 through its paces with five different resins, and the results were near-perfect prints across the board. The technical components, which demand flat, straight walls in a myriad of 90 degree angles, features that typically challenge LCD printers, came out with micron level precision. The GK2 excelled particularly with the individual parts of a scale model of the Starship Frontier from Starfield, which called for both precision and intricate detail. Take it from me, a part like this speaks volumes about the printer's prowess. We're talking serious overhangs, crisp details, and flat walls that come together to form a piece that's virtually impeccable. And for the miniature enthusiasts out there, you're going to appreciate what the GK2 can achieve. I printed a character from Starfield in their full constellation suit, and despite the subtleties being a bit obscured due to the 
X13's resin layering. The details like the fine wrinkles in the suit are discernible. The visor is almost as smooth as glass. The precision is practically perfect. It's doubtful I'll need any plastic filler for this model. So without a doubt, the final product is king, but let's chat about a few issues I encountered with the Uniformation GK2. I've already mentioned releveling the plate became a thing after a printing marathon, which isn't out of the ordinary once you put a printer to work, but good news, it's been rock steady since even after clocking in over 100 hours of an additional print time. Now, the filter module is a bit on the loose side. I haven't run lab tests for VOC levels, but just going by my nose, I reckon the filter slashes the odor probably by about half. The GK2's overall build quality is top notch, though there's room for some tweaks. The Z-axis sports a single linear rail and somewhat slender drive screw, while beefier, Dual linear rail setups are common in this price range. This machine still delivers smooth and steady build platform action. No sign of racking or warping, even with hefty build volumes. I, at first, I was scratching my head over the vat being plastic, but it hit me. A metal vat would just hog up all the heat, forcing the chamber heater to overwork. This system heats from below, focus on getting that crucial bottom layer of 30 to 50 microns up to temperature for the perfect cure, and it nails that job. Lastly, those silicone bumpers on the lid are a tad oversized and were impacting the vat cover right out of the box. I swapped them out for smaller ones I had lying around. I dropped a link to the smaller bumpers in the video description for anyone else who might need the fix. Ultimately, the features and performance of the Uniformation GK2 more than make up for any minor quirks, placing this printer in a league of its own. The GK2 is normally priced at $850, but as of the time of this filming, it's on a holiday sale for just $700. Plus, post-Christmas, there's a special $80 off code for my viewers on both the Uniformation website and Amazon. Just hit up the description to snag that deal. Now, unless I'm mistaken, heated printers under $1,000 are non-existent in the market, making this one a standout. For me, since this is the only printer from my collection that I can reliably use from November to May, it will be a workhorse. Knowing that I can effortlessly replace or upgrade the screen if needed definitely adds to its value. However, for those of you in milder climates or with a climate controlled printing setup where a heated printer isn't a necessity, you might not need all the bells and whistles of the GK2. You can find other top notch 8K 10 inch SLA printers that get you comparable print qualities for less, like the Creality Halo Mage and for 12K, the Elgu Saturn III spring to mind. But that's it for this review of the Uniformation GK2 3D printer, a solid performer that really stands out in its price range. With a special discount for my viewers, check the description. It's a definite contender for those needing to print in colder environments. If you're in the market for a reliable heated SLA printer, the GK2 is one to consider. Thanks for watching guys, hit that like button if you enjoyed the review, subscribe for more, and share your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.